You swore you would retake your crown, even if you had to penetrate hell to do so. Time to follow that oath. This might be a little bit of a simpler map. Eh, yeah, I would say, well, maybe not. Okay, maybe not at all. <clears throat> Although I do like the artwork. It looks very, very good. All right, let's move. Man. Wouldn't want to mess with them. No, sir. <coughs> Done too shabby as views go, eh? Not at all. Were it not for the howling wind, I'd make a sketch. <laughs> nice, we've got some new markers. Oh, sneeze. back all right it's a nice wee bit of gold and wood lots of recruits nice a lot more golden wood <coughs> Ruh row Slowly, her surroundings interesting to her, her ears keen to take in the cacophony of sounds, the sharp whistle of wind rushing past towering peaks, the sound of a troll, wheels rolling over frozen snow, <laughs> and the roar of beasts. What the? I dare not venture a guess. <laughs> Gabor scratched his chin. An ice troll. Or one of them Barbie Gazer Bajabas. These beasts, are they tame? A Barbie Gazer Bajabber. Not in your life. Fierce horses, every last one of them. Spring cleaning year past, one year bit my arm clear off. <coughs> the Queen's brow rose in a silent inquiry. All oh, right. You don't quite get the context. Each spring, with the melting of the snows, a good bit of that filth comes out the ground. That's when Beaver <coughs> Hood summons all dwarves for spring cleaning. We cut down as much of the filth as we can, and that means relative calm. Nice. Out of the corner of her eye, Meave noted a dark shape darting between rock formations. Calmly, she drew her sword and brandished it a time or two to warm up her stiff arms. Seems it is our lot to assist you with this cleaning. Nice. Let's do it. <coughs> Don't let Brewer die out. For a great many years, Mahakam was closed off to the outside world. Hey, Lionheart! Thank you, buddy. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Thank you for the raid again, man. I really do appreciate it. How's everyone doing today? Hope you're doing great. I'm Havoc. And we're playing some Throne Breakers after uh, playing some Starship Troopers. So. <coughs> Thank you very much, sir. I do really appreciate it. Uh, Mahakam was closed off to the outside world. When the Elven Kings began their last desperate push to drive men from the Lowlands, the Dwarves slammed shut the passage of their mountainous realm. For centuries they waited. Only when the slaughter in the valleys below subsided did they again open their gates. The, great, the Dwarves referred to this day as the Great Aaron Out. Do not let Briver die, eliminate the Ashelmeyer, hint in one fell swoop. Welcome everyone. I hope you I hope you'll enjoy it. I hope you'll stick around. Uh let's get rid of that one and that one and that one and that one. Uh come on in. 
Move that one too. Hold on real quick. Stop standing around like corns on a toe. Get to work. All right, the mighty Shalmar. Every three turns, randomly damage enemies by a portion of Shalmar's current armor, then move to the other row. If on a melee row, damage the highest enemy by his by this unit's current armor. If on a ranged row, damage the lowest enemy, then set the armor to eight. Okay. That's his armor. Hmm. Does he have other? He doesn't have any other things, does he? This is a shortened battle. It is a shortened battle. On two light infantry, that's fine. <coughs> Abolist, your command. All right, you got some splitting to do. That was super easy. Speared Shalemars died down. The crowd of Mahakaman infantry parted. A dwarf stepped forth, gray as a snow fox, wrinkled as a prune. <coughs> He walked with difficulty, supporting himself on a battle axe, its two heads dripping blood. This would be our elder in chief, Bruver Hoog. Bruver Hoog. And who might your guests be, Gabor? Meave, Queen of Lyria and Rivia, and her associate. <coughs> my regards, elder. I come. You come for something. Coins, my first wager. <laughs> bodies, my second. Well. What is it you want? Not wrong. you men folk. You got to fall on hard times to remember us dwarves. I've come with a design in mind, I cannot deny. <laughs> but hear me out and you shall see. She's armed! Gabor! Why the devil do you let her in here like that? I'm sack or her heat! She has the leaden ring, Elder. Oh. From a king. From Devabend, lassie, I came that already. <laughs> something of value and you'll go and give it away as easy as a street whore gives away nubs <laughs> thing he didn't pawn it sons of humans i've traveled far to see you hear me out i beg you yeah let it be my love <coughs> away nilfgaard has overrun my realms it has overrun edda the black clads are at the foot of mahakam they will seek to overrun your land sooner or later as well. We must act. Imagine they'd have a little bit of a hard time with that. There is still time. Time? What do you care at time, lass? Got how many summers to you? Forty, maybe. Had you grown up amongst dwarven folk, at your age you'd be learning to crochet dolls. No more than that. <laughs> I've seen 400 summers come and go. And I've been a lot of summers. Learned in that time. <coughs> meddling in your idiot scraps doesn't ever bring any good. Now, on a normal day, I'd have you all thrown clear out of this land I love. But you've the leaden ring, and that grants you the right to hospitality. And here, in Mahakam, laws and rights are sacred. You may stay in the pass long as nice. you wish. Young Zigrin will serve as your guide. And once you've tired of the mountains, well, you can the way down into the valleys. I bid you farewell. I bid you farewell. Do you respect? We came to your aid. We smote the beasts with you. Yet, and to the demons, Count Reynard Odo. Oh, oh, Odo, Odo, Bodo. <laughs> now, you listen and listen well. 
We didn't ask for aid. I like this guy. Yeah, we'll be fine. Though damned if I know how. We have none other to whom we can turn, no other land where we can flee. Let us con Your grace. Oh. Might I draw you aside a wee moment? For a jabber. For a jabber. Please excuse me. What are we, you little jabber? What is it you want? I can the elder in chief, then I make a good first impression. <laughs> and the second? Is it any better? Mm. To be quite frank. No. no. <laughs> Not all's lost, trust me. The river's a stubborn goat, no doubt about it. But a goat to be persuaded. <clears throat> and I happen to gain how. The selfless impulse to help. I don't believe it exists. So before you describe how you aim to aid me, be kind enough to explain why you wish to do so. Unsolicited, mind you, and clearly against your elders' wishes. A query of my own to answer yours. Do you ken when Bruverhoog last strode down the mountains into your lowlands? I know not. While King Sambuk sat on the throne? Point of fact, never. Never. He's born here and he'll die here, like most Mahakaman dwarves. Whereas <coughs> I have in your shoulders. I've been an emissary to royal courts. Trade guilds, mummers, troops, and I've eyes. I can see all the rubbish goes on between you. Nice. The black clads will not stop till they've put the whole continent neath their boot. From Ophir in the south to the Dragon Mountains in the north, gods forbid they grip all the Nordlings' realms in their vice. Because then we'll have their hordes all round, controlling all the trade routes, supply lines, diversions even. And then they'll control terms and prices. Yep. We dwarves have never been on a lead, let alone a short one. <laughs> so, in short, <coughs> we'll all be better off with the black clans back as the Yoruga. We agree. And I've seen your grace, seen you in battle, your brawn and bite, and with the right I like this guy. You can drive them back. I can that well. Very well, I'm all ears. What must we do to spur Bruverhoog to aid us? Hmm. I might start with the thorn in our side that are beasts. A bigger thorn than most expect. See, in our never-ending search for... Who dug deep, too deep. Dwarves are great, I agree. ...and reached abysses where monsters are born, or however they come to be. As soon as it turns a bit warm, we <coughs> crawl out to feed. And there's more every year. What you saw there, the spring cleaning, that's just light yearly upkeep. <laughs> then I go at the source of the blight. Every spring we cull enough so we can live and trade and mine normal like. But there are corridors in the upper valleys midst the peaks. Interesting. So they want us to clear stuff out. So many. There's settlements that have done been up. I still fail to see how this... Your Majesty. Slay yep. the beasts down to their last. It's true. You'll win the hearts of the clans. All of them. Nice. <coughs> Divorce Abyss. Davos. And an underground settlement called Burr's Rump. Destroy those. Collapse the corridors. Prop. Nice. And this? I believe it would. Uh, but, but, but. Mm. All this sounds... You've my gratitude, Gabor. That works. We can do that. Quite a bit of resources there. So yeah, we just need to do all that stuff and we'll be good. The queen, their bodies of dwarven miners trapped me to the ice sheet. Likely swallowed. It's too late for them now, but their equipment's recoverable. <coughs> nice. Sorry, I'm I'm like ready to move along. Don't go sticking your nose in others' affairs. You fondle it, you buy it. Don't question our laws. Get out as quick as you can. Don't bother me. I love it. 
Okay. <clears throat> There's a lot of stuff up there. So we got ourselves another little beast. <clears throat> Elder Hoog once instructed his secretary Grummick to prepare a list of all the caves, caverns, and grottos in Mahakam. None ever learned why such information had become a priority. Perhaps Bruver needed to record for a highly secretive task. Perhaps he had simply fallen into a sour mood and wished to bring the secretary down with him. In any case, the census of Mahakam's underground caverns was never completed, for Gromick had disappeared without a trace. No one ever discovered his true fate, yet the bones that continue to pile up and gather dust at the threshold of Mahakam's darkest caves serve well to spark one's imaginations. Stainer battle. Nothing fancy here. Um, we'll do that. I don't want Gascon on there. Pitfall trap. Alright. Every two turns on turn start, give a random unit four armor. On round in, units with armor gain resilience. Ooh, harpies. Gross. Uh, okay, so we don't want to kill it. Let's see, that would be nine. This is a standard battle. So we should be able to kill it in the next turn. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Let's go. No, we don't want to destroy it. Okay, well, we won that one easily enough. Now we just gotta win the second one. Let's go. That spawns a harpy. I don't know what this does. Play one trinket from your deck, damage unit by 10 if it was destroyed, deal any remaining damage to another unit. Let's go. Thing about slings, they hide well. Dang it. Okay. Well, let's go here. Got four there, but I don't want to use the Scepter of Storms. You mad? Don't say that. See how well that does. Oh my word. Dang it.
Let's end the turn real quick. Dang it. Let's go right here. I think we I think we've got this. Damage a random enemy by two if it's under biting frost. Damage it by four. Repeat this ability whenever a snow wolf wolf ally appears. Interesting. Interesting. Let's go there. Dang it. One more turn and we can damage all of those. Hey, the Balrus, thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. <coughs> I do appreciate it. Son of a biscuit. Hmm. Let's just do this. That's going to spawn all of those, but I have the Scepter of Stones. I think that might help me enough. No one still has the same stuff, so using uh, Meave's thing won't do any good. Still doesn't do anything good for me. Uh, you know what? We'll go ahead and do that. No. Damage enemy and all of the enemies with the same power by four. We'll see if this works. <clears throat> Woo! Nice. Not too shabby. People of the hills, we hereby order five barrels of cured beef, 40 links of juniper sausage, five sides of pork, 10 dozen goose eggs, 20 sacks of rye flour, payment issued in gold. Warning, goods must be tightly packed so as not to attract monsters. We bear no responsibility for accidents. Elder Va Vavrinik of Clan Fen Fenric. This doesn't have any use for us. <clears throat> yeah, that's all good there. I think we're going to have to drop 50 bucks. There we go. I kind of want to say these are abandoned, but I might be wrong. Oh, I think I'm wrong. I don't know that I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to do a puzzle. We might have to, but... How is this possible? Madness, pure madness. Everywhere looks exactly the same. How am I supposed to remember? So many corridors, shafts, and chambers. Have to keep moving. But then what? Don't remember treasure, but what kind? This kind. Yeah, this is definitely a livable settlement. There's something over here that I'm missing. Aha, the wood. Brilliant. Go around, Meave. <coughs> Let's do it. Mahakam is not unlike an iceberg. What's visible on the surface is but a tiny fraction of the whole. In order to truly grasp, one must venture beneath the earth, travel mile-long passages, peer into chasms that seem to stretch into eternity. Four long foreigners can begin to lose all sense of time and space. The mine shafts, a pair identical one after another, as if reflected in a mirror fashioned from a mountain crystal. 
Use your leader's ability, hint. Look into the eye of your foe. What separates you is only but a mirror. Okay. Choose a stone and swap it with the stone on its left. If there is none, move it to the rightmost place on the other row. So I need to, these need to line up. Choose a stone and swap it to the stone on its left. Choose a stone and swap it with a stone on its left. Okay, so we can only do it on that one. If there is none, move it to the rightmost place on the other row. I would assume this is my right and this is my left. So I need to go Mm, no, I don't. I need to move. And then I swap. There we go. <clears throat> oh, is this? That must have been the same puzzle. Nice. <clears throat> Guys, that may have been the easiest puzzle I think I've ever done. I'm not gonna lie. Let's move along. Majesty, a human traveler is offered to sell us a treasure map. Says he sought it out once, got caught in a blizzard. That's fine. So it's at the end of a shaft next to a mine. A mine! Well, let's see. Yeah, let's go around this circle and then we'll be done with that area and we can go up uh, above. Lonely Rock. Meave noted a crowd of dwarves. They were several dozen, many holding baskets brimming with dried sausages, soft, puffy pretzels. Mmm, pretzels. What is this gathering? She asked. These folk. They're the parents of youngsters who are to return today from the Drekthag. Gabor proceeded to explain that the Drekthag was a trek upon which the local dwarves would embark when they reached maturity. During this year-long voyage, young folk would taste of life beyond their home. Yet if they failed to return on time, they would be stripped of all rights and privileges accorded to Mahakam's natives. See, in recent years, young folk's blood's been boiling on account of the strict laws and force here. Gotcha. So, we send them out. Let them taste life in the lowlands. Once they've learned for themselves what it's like to live among humans, they come back and ain't likely to complain. Customarily, only nice. few dwarves ever decided to remain in the valleys for good. Deadlines the morrow and 40 haven't returned. And 40 Drakethagers still haven't returned. Their parents now worried if some misfortune had not befallen them. The Mahakaman Guard had sent out patrols to the near reaches of the valleys. They returned, not having seen anything distressing, while the humans living at the foot of the Massif had been largely unwilling to talk. The guard captain, a dwarf with a fiery red beard, removed his helmet, wiped the sweat from his brow, and addressed me. Your Majesty, we need to find our youth. Yeah, we'll definitely do it. The Queen sent a scout ahead. Sometime later, she heard his horn. Three blasts, two short, one long. Scoyotal. Oh my word. 
Son of a biscuit. Me was prepared for clashes with brigands, monsters, and of guardians, but Scoyotal, in the high mountains near the very gates of Mahakam, what did they seek? The queen did not know, yet one conclusion seemed clear. At the very least, they sought her head on a pike. They follow us here? Because we killed their leader? I don't have Rayla in here anymore. Damage enemy by five and its adjacent units by two. <laughs> Dwarven mercenary. Hmm. And I really don't have good units. Come on. What's biting frost? On every turn, damage lowest units on this row by two. Let's wait for that one. Heal our allies and boost them by two. Uh, let's wait for that one. Let's damage those guys. There we go. Damage the low lowest by two. Still need to lay down some cover fire. Uh, let's see. Boost allies by two, damage enemies by two. Let's go. You think they would pass? <coughs> there we go. That should wipe the biting frost off, right? In theory. Good. You can try to win them all, but you won't. Bring it on, bring it on. Every time on turn in, boost self by one if biting frost is on an enemy row. of each unit on this row's average. I don't know that I want to do that yet. This could hurt. I'm going to force them to use this row and then I can use damage this one. That would help a lot. go I shall not fail. whenever a non-elf unit is destroyed boost this unit by two mm. let's go I want to try and kill that guy. <clears throat> we ought to help one or the other. Mm, okay. 
think one more and we'll be able to really use them. Uh, let's go... That actually works in our favor. Oh, dang it. Let's just do that. Let's go right here. And we built this up enough. We're going to boost him by a lot, unfortunately. Oh, never mind. I thought it'd be more than that. In the turn, let's do it. <clears throat> None shall tread on us. Ow. Is that the power of each unit on this row to the average? And then destroy it. But that would just boost them. It's designed to take one low. Two turns, damage adjacent units by six. Anywhere destroyed, move to the other side of the battlefield. Kind of backfired a little bit, didn't it? Actually did not help me whatsoever. All right. <clears throat> I don't think this last guy can. There we go. So young. No wonder they were easily manipulated. Very nice. Instead of returning home, they had enlisted with guerrillas fighting for non-human rights. But what had prompted so drastic a decision? I was impatient. Wanted badly to turn 50. <laughs> turn 50. To see human cities. Sima, Tretigor, Novigrad. Said one of the dwarven prisoners while pressing a bandage to a bleeding wound. There you go. All the welcome that awaited me there. I was spit upon and called names. I saw ghettos. Massacres. Yeah. And how was that to go? Saw a lot of crap. After that. We must fight while we still can. Before the humans come to cut us down, we must <coughs> tell the rest of ours the same. Pull all Maha come into the fight. Perfect. These soldiers stood waiting for her to protest, to accuse the dwarf of lying. But the queen could not pretend she did not understand why the dwarf had taken up arms. Without entering into a discussion, she ordered the prisoners taken to be tried and judged by their kin. Along her way, Meave heard cries. She rushed to see what the ruckus was about. Upon seeing Black Rayler spattered with... Oh, them, no. ...expected the worst. Raynard could only confirm the Queen's fears. She entered the wagon unnoticed. This wouldn't have happened if we had sent her away. She then cut their throats one by one. Forty dwarves. Alone. They were shackled. They could not defend themselves. Rayla had nothing to say in her defense. In point of fact, she exuded pride. Mahakam had been free of Scoyatel till now. 
We'd have done all a questionable favour by bringing back a wagon full of enraged youth wearing squirrel tails. They'd have posed as martyrs for a just cause. They'd have shown off their scar. Neve could see the blood rushing his yeah. head. When he finally spoke, it was clear he was holding the reins. Yeah. Rayla, it is a fine line that separates a soul. Holy cow, that's brutal. The Lyrians remained silent throughout their return. Upon spying their downcast. Yeah, that's messed up. That's what I get. Wondering how it was one evil for another.